So in this question, we have an AC generator, and in part A, we are asked to determine the maximum EMF that is induced in the coil. Now, the equation that gives EMS, EMF as a function of time for an AC generator is shown here in the box, and we notice that that equation contains a sine term right here. So if you're trying to maximize the EMF, you're going to also have to maximize that sine term. Now, we know from our studies in mathematics that the maximum value of a sine function is simply equal to 1. So what we're going to do is replace that circled sine term with 1. The next thing that we're going to have to do is talk about this angular frequency omega. Now that's given in the question as 120 revolutions per minute, but that is not the standard unit. We need to convert that into radians per second. So we're going to go ahead and do that by writing out 120 revs over one minute, and then we'll do a standard unit conversion. We know that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians, and then we also of course know that one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So what happens here is the minutes will cancel out, the revolutions will cancel out, that's going to leave us with radians per second. Now if we look at this, we have 120 times two, which is 240, and then 240 divided by 60 is four, and then we still have a pi there. So what we have is omega is equal to four pi, and that is now in radians per second. We now also talk about the cross-sectional area of this rectangular loop, we've sketched it over here. We know that the area is equal to the length times the width, so all we need to do is take our length. Now the question said that the length was 20 centimeters, so just divide that by 100 to get 0.2 meters. And then the width was eight centimeters, divide that by 100 to get 0.08 meters. And we multiply that out and we can see that the area is going to be 0.016 meters squared. Good, so we have omega, we have the area. Let's go back and find N. Capital N is basically the number of turns in the coil, and that is given as 500, so that's our N. And then we also need B, which is the magnitude of the magnetic field, and that is 0.6 Tesla. So we're just gonna go ahead now and plug in all four values. And when you do that, you should get an EMF of about 60.3. Now this is EMF, so the standard unit will come out in volts. So this is the correct answer to part A of the question. We can look at part B, which asks us for the instantaneous value of the EMF when time is pi over 32 seconds. So we're gonna use the same equation, but this time we are doing instantaneous, not necessarily the maximum value. So we're not going to set the sine term equal to one. We're just gonna plug in all of the values. And again, the time was given to us in the question as being pi over 32. So we'll go ahead and plug in. Everything else that we stated earlier is the same. Notice omega shows up twice in the equation, but we use the value determined earlier. So everything has been plugged in. Again, note that the time was pi over 32 right there. You do wanna make sure your calculator is set in radian mode. And when we do that and punch it in, we get about 56.9 volts. That is the correct answer to part B. Finally, in part C, we need to determine the smallest value of time for which the EMF will have its maximum value. And perhaps to understand that, we can take a look at a graph. So here is the graph. This is actually a graph of the EMF as a function of time. And we are asked again for the time at which we reach the maximum EMF first. So that would be this point right here. This is a sine function. So we recall from again, our mathematical studies that the first time that we reach that maximum value is going to occur when our sine argument, in other words, this omega t, when that is equal to pi over two. When you studied graphing sine functions, you probably remember that first you plot zero, zero, and then your next point will be at the maximum, and that occurs when the argument of sine is pi over two. So in order for us to reach that maximum, we have to set that argument of sine equal to pi over two. And that is going to allow us to solve for the time. We divide both sides by omega, or alternatively, we can multiply both sides by one over omega. And that works nicely because the omegas cancel. And then on the right side, we're going to see that the time is equal to pi times one, which is pi. And then on the bottom there, two times omega is two omega. So now we just plug everything in because we know that omega was the four pi. And that was in radians per second. It looks like the pi's are gonna cancel out. So you're really just left with one over two times four, which is eight. And that is the correct answer in seconds. As a decimal, that would be 0 0.125 seconds. So this is the correct answer to part C. 
Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please don't feel obligated to do so.